she, she can stay home with little uh, Lena there and uh, feed her. And, and she's a toddler. She's like six months old, cute as can be. Uh, babies are just so cute, aren't they? They really are. She's sweet and just love. I love to see him grow and uh, just come to and all that. And uh, just being a grandpa is a, it's a neat experience and a, a different kind of experience than having your own kids. It's hard to, hard to explain. You just have to kind of go through it. And I kind of feel lucky that I have. I didn't think it was going to happen this soon, but sometimes nature has a different different plan. And But I look forward to it every single time. And, yes, it's a lot easier to be a grandparent because, yeah, they, they actually go home and it's short. And there's only so many diapers that you can change before it's like, all right, uh, mom, can you change that diaper? Uh, here's another example of how the left loves to paint anybody associated with the Trump camp, i.e. Trump's daughter, Ivanka. The Washington Post had to say the president's daughter and advisor was addressing the Japanese government's World Assembly for Women's Conference just two days ahead of Donald Trump's arrival in Japan. Her keynote motivational speech focused on female entrepreneurship something she has passionately been campaigning over the past few months, but it's not clear why such a small crowd turned up to the highly publicized event, according to the Post. But it could have been due to Friday being a public holiday in Japan. All right. The, uh, but uh, here we go. The New York Times says a tepid turnout. That was the Post. This is the Times. The tepid turnout was a stark contrast to the media frenzy that has ignited her arrival uh, there to uh, Nareda Air International Airport on Thursday. Uh, the Japanese news media followed Ivanka Trump's every move following her arrival uh, as major news. A White House official said per the Post that Ivanka's Trump speech was the most registered event of the conference, but security delays resulted in people not being able to arrive on time. There's the there's the real story. Security lines. People were still coming in when Ivanka was speaking. She has a key role, obviously, in Trump's administration. The president's own daughter, a uh, senior advisor to the White House. You don't think that there's young women, business entrepreneurs that wouldn't want to listen to a successful businesswoman such as Ivanka? She's very intelligent. Ivy League education. Again, senior advisor. She's right there with the president. A uh, Post reporter, though, said only a handful of people were seen stuck behind the security cordon when the speech began. I mean, it, it's just this, this again, disparity, this news that comes in is just hogwash. It, it's just ridiculous. Anything to discredit, disqualify any of the any of the good things that are happening, and, and, and even if it wasn't a good thing, they can't report the facts as they really are. None of this ever happened, by the way, during Barack Obama's tenure. None of this ever happened. Nobody ever questioned how many people showed up, how many people were disinterested, how many people heckled. None of this particular happened because they simply didn't care about those things. But now everything is keeping score. And if it looks like just kind of like the rallies, the, the Trump rallies, where they would never show the crowds and they would come in by the tens of thousands, even here in Tampa, where I do the show at the fairgrounds. I mean, you could not get another person in. It was always that way, whether it was up north in Ocala or our affiliate there in Ocala. It was always you couldn't get another person in. It's the same thing. Like him or hate him, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. You just can't take that away. And again, there's nothing, 
nothing that's going to cause him to be impeached. This is a a feeble attempt at the left to try to get him out of the White House. If anybody needed, by the way, before we transition to this next story, if you have a stint, by the way, you want to stay tuned. Uh, we would have impeached Donald, uh, excuse me, his predecessor, uh, Barack Hussein Obama. God, good riddance. I almost forgot his name. It was really nice just for a moment just to forget him. But for eight years, it would have been nice to impeach him. But his failed policies, uh, the, unemp- the, 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 the unemployment rates, the Obamacare debacle and failure, the depleted military, Benghazi. Uh, the scandals with uh, Hillary Clinton, the emails, uh, the dysfunction, the the meddling, the campaign dollars, the just abuse of power with the executive pen on all these social experiments in the country, Solyndra, all the failures. They never concentrated on any of those particulars at all. They gave him a free pass for eight years, eight years. He could do no wrong. It's it's he could do no wrong as if he was a perfect president. I still again am mystified on why in the world they would spend as much money as they they're going to spend apparently in Chicago for a library. Other than him being the first biracial president, black American, African American, Kenyan, whatever you want to call him, he's the blackest thing that America's ever seen. So I'm not taking that away from him. Not trying to be disrespectful in any way. I get that. But other than that, I do not see anything else that was anything close to being a positive mark. Now, I know what he's going to put on the wall. I know what he's going to say, what he's going to claim. The big one going out was the LGBTQ community, that he did so much for them. Did he? Did he really help them? Folks, people don't realize, as well as minorities, they were used for his benefit. For his benefit alone, and that he benefited from it. You think he really thinks about you at the end of the night or any other minority? Do you think he's really doing this? Think about it. Seriously. And I told another lib yesterday, uh, Obama could have done a whole lot more for minorities, but he did not. Um, He didn't. And that's just my observation, that he could have done a lot more to bridge the divides. Instead, he said stuff like this that really irritated me. If my son, if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon Martin. Remember that? I mean, just crap like that out of his mouth. I don't want a son like Trayvon Martin. Was that character and integrity? It wasn't. You don't want a son like Trayvon Martin. That encourages people to grab guns, shoot police, disrespect police officers, break the law. We need examples. We need more big brothers. We need mentors to be able to go in and mentor these young people in the inner cities. These football players need to become big brothers. These these minorities, a lot of them have no daddies. It's not a big surprise, and it's sad that more African Americans are without a daddy than any other race on the planet, at least here in America. And there needs to be something done about it. Now, I had a conversation with somebody that's of liberal leading and said that, you know, white people need to do more. And I, I was listening. I'm all ears. How? How? How, how can we do it? Well, you know, it, it, there's not an easy answer for any of this. There's not an easy answer. We need to work hand in hand. And I think possibly that might be correct with the NFL commissioner trying to save face with the players to hear that there might be some racial inequality, and that's a loose term, might be. Of course, we know that there's the cases 
uh, in, in, in Royal America and different places on the planet that, unfortunately, it happens. My only point is, can't we do something off the field that actually is a tangible? It's kind of like a church that preaches the gospel and the things that you should do to be able to promote Christianity, such as Mother Teresa getting there with the poor, dedicating your life to it, showing people that you love them by feeding them, clothing them, praying with them, actually doing the gospel out loud. To me, that would be a practical thing to do, to show your love in the inner cities. And maybe a lot of churches need to do more of that. Now, there's tons of inner city churches and ministries that do reach out to a lot of poor and disadvantaged children and families. There needs to probably be much more of an initiative to do that, to help more people that need help. We need to all do something. A lot of us turn our backs. A lot of us would never go over the tracks. Nobody would ever listen to another point of view. Never, never, nobody would look at another person in the eyes. This is a different color. There's a lot of craziness that goes on in our world. I'm not here to throw stones. I'd like to just find solutions and have a open conversation. And that's what we do each day here. And I try to do it from a practical standpoint. I don't have all the answers, but we're talking about it, how we might be able to achieve some of these things. Um, it, it's wonderful to be able to point something out. But if you don't talk about how we can do this and start doing something literally tangible, practical, then nothing's going to get done. It's just lip service. And it's no better, no better uh, players that want to take a knee or do a fist bump. It's no better than most of these politicians that you're so frustrated with. Because apparently you're so frustrated that they're doing nothing. So why don't you do something? And remember, the real answer is not Washington anyways. It really isn't. It's you and I. We, it, it, it's us. We're the ones that make America work. They know the backbone of Mr. and Mrs. America who pay the taxes for the roads that you drive on each day, for the infrastructure that you enjoy when you flush the toilet, all these things you pay for. You work hard for. That's why it's so important to make sure that we're all doing our part and contribute in a positive way moving forward. We can count all the negatives. We can keep score about all the things that we hate and dislike. But people that have some smarts talk about ideas. They don't talk crap about each other. Uh, smack talk, putting people down, which that's what a lot of the left is doing with Donald Trump. They actually are engaged. They actually are working with their hands. They are not spreading propaganda and hatred. They're spreading love, and they're trying to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Well, that's my takeout piece uh, on, on this particular. So, okay, the heart stint, as I did tease it, and I should probably go ahead and let you know, there is a new heart stint study that says the uh, devices may not necessarily um, relieve chest pain for many patients. This is, this is uh, researchers at Imperial College London. They presented their actual findings yesterday, suggesting that the relief in chest pain among patients who receive stents could largely be due to a placebo effect. CBS noted this as well. The new study, which was published in The Lancet Calls, and The Lancet, you may want to look up, you can see this study for yourself, calls into question the general consensus that the placement of the stint could provide drastic relief of chest pain. The American Heart Association, they weighed in on this. They described this device as a tiny wire mesh tube used to prop open an artery. You might have one. Uh, yeah, the buildup of fatty deposits can reduce the coronary artery. Here's a little information on what goes on and lead to a reduction of blood flow to the heart, so ultimately causing chest pain or angina. So for years, medical professionals have touted the use of a stint as the most effective solution for treating this condition. However, this new study cast out. Dr. Rasha Alamine, lead author of the study from the National Heart and Lung Institute at Imperial College London, explained in a statement that patients are commonly given stints to unblock the coronary artery during heart attacks. However, 
We also place stints into patients who are getting pain only. 